This video is going to be about the Monty Hall problem. So, first of all, I'm going to say what the Monty Hall problem actually is. The Monty Hall problem was a famous game show puzzle where a contestant was invited to open one of three mystery doors, behind one of which was a car and the other two were goats. So the car, the car was the prize that the contestant wanted. So the contestant would pick a door um, and just before the door was opened to reveal the prize or the goat, the host, Monty, would pick one of the other two doors to reveal a goat. So the question is, would the contestant be better to stick with their original choice or change to the one remaining door that hadn't been picked by the contestant or the host? If you, have, if you don't know the answer to this problem, then it might be worth pausing the video and having a think about it. And then I'll do a full solution. Okay, so the answer is it's better to change. Um, after the host has revealed um, a goat behind one of the other two doors, it's better to change to the final third door. Um, there are lots of ways that you can understand why this is the case. It's actually twice as like, you're actually twice as likely to win by changing as you are by staying with your original choice. Um, but I'm going to show um, uh, a sort of mathematical reason behind why this is the case. So if you want to search for some more visual reasons, perhaps, then um, I'm sure you can be able to find, some, find them. So I'm going to use probability to, to show why that's the case. So in the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to assume that the car is behind the first door and the second and third door have goats behind. But obviously the contestant won't know this, so the contestant is going to pick one of these three doors at random. So I'm going to define some terminology that I'm going to use here. So um, this is the event change. So this, so this is this is sort of representing what 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 it means for the contestant to change their choice. So these letters here I'm going to define. So what I mean by D1 is the original door that the contestant chose. In this case, they chose D1 to start off with, and F2 is the final door that they end up with. So in this case, um, they will end up. Um, opening the second door to reveal the goat. So what I'm so what I'm showing here by change is a list of all the possible um, events that can occur that represent a change in the choice. So I've I've, I've listed all the all the different possibilities. So the, the contestant can start off with a door one, um, with with the first door and change to the second door. They can start off with the first door and change to the third door, uh, and so on. So I've just um, written out all the combinations for completeness. Now. This isn't a particularly useful way of writing it. It's far more useful to write it in terms of the door that the host, Monty, opens. So that's what I've done here. So you can see that if the contestant picks the first door, um, and this, this just simply means intersection, so, so it means that the, the contestant has um, picked the first door and um, changed to the last door. So these, these, these are an intersection of events, so um, it means that um, the event D1 has occurred in which in which um, the contestant opened the first door to begin with and the event F2 has also occurred which means that the final door that the contestant ended up with is the second door and these, these are a union between between all these different possible events so these these could all occur so each one of these brackets could occur and that would also represent a change although actually some of these can't occur which I'm going to explain now so I'm going to write these out in terms of the the, in terms of the choice that the host can make. So if if the contestant chooses the first door and and ends up with the second door, then that means that the, that the host must have, must have opened the third door to reveal the goat. Because if the host opens the third door to reveal the goat and the contestant chose the first door originally, then, then that means that they must end up with the second door because they changed their choice. So, and, like, and, and similarly with this one, if they started with the first door and the host opened the second door and they changed, then obviously they would end up with the third door here. So that makes sense. You can see here I've got the empty set because this event is actually impossible. It's impossible to start with the second door and end up with the third door. Because if you were to start with the second door, the one that's got the goat behind, and end up the third door, it would require the host to open the first door, which we know is not going to happen because we know that the host opens a door to reveal a goat. So this event is impossible, which is why I've represented that by the empty set here. So I can just delete these two here. Okay, so 
this this is my this is this is this is what represents the event change. Okay. So now I'm going to actually calculate what I what I want to find out, which is the probability of that change um, the probability that you weren't what that you can win the car given given that you've changed. So that's what I've done here. The probability that you end up with the first door given that you've changed. And don't forget the car is behind the first door because that's the assumption I made to begin with. Okay, so um, again, this isn't too useful in this current form, so I'm going to change that. So you can see that the probability of, of this event, given this event, is equal to this. Because if we look at this Venn diagram here, so the probability of door 1, given that we've changed, so given that we've changed, we have to be in this red circle here. We can't possibly be um, outside of the red circle because we, because it is known, it's guaranteed that we have changed because it's given that we've changed. So we've got to be in this red circle. So we want the probability of F1 given that we've changed. So you can see that's represented by the fraction of area in this intersection um, over, over the entire area here, which is exactly what I've written down. The probability of F1 intercept change, which is the bit in the middle here, divided by the probability of, of the whole of the red circle, which is the probability of the change. Okay. So all I need to do now is substitute um, what I, um, my event here that I put, which I defined in a nicer way, uh, um, in, into this equation here. So that's exactly what I've done. So the probability of F1 intersect with change is the probability of F1 intersect with this thing here. I just substituted that in. Now I've got rid of the empty, empty sets because they're not because they're just empty, so I can do that. And you can see I've done it with the denominator as well. I've, I've changed the probability of change to the probability of this. Okay. Now, if I, if I look at, look at the, this numerator here, I can simplify it a bit. Um, remember that, that this, this, this bit here, inside, inside these brackets, is equal to also this line here. So, what it's worth noting is that F1 is intersecting with, 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 the, with this lot here. So F1 can only intersect um, with events that are not contradictory. So um, it, can it, it, it can intersect with, uh, it can't intersect with this event, for example, because that would require uh, for F1, for, for the final door to have opened, and for F2 to have opened. And we obviously know that, that, that the final door can't be 1 and 2. It can only be one of those. So we can't intersect with this possible event. I mean, these, these, these are taking the unions of, of all these different events. So these are all the, all, all the possibilities. But we can't intersect with this, with this bracket here because we know that we can't, in, we can't have the final door being 1 and the final door being 2, which is what this represents because we can see that this bracket is equal to this bracket here. So this, this thing is impossible. So what I've done is I've removed the ones that are impossible, right here. So the first bracket is impossible, and also is, and also the second one is impossible as well, for a similar reason. You, you can verify this. We can't, we can't, we can't have um, um, D1 intersect with M2 because that would require the final law to be um, F3. We know that we have to end up with the final door being open, so we can't have we can't have this second bucket here either. So I've got rid of the ones that we can't have. And in fact, the only ones that we can have are these final ones here. So I've written these down here. So actually, what we can do is we can, is we can now get rid of this F1 intersect, these two, after all. Because we know that, that this event here requires the final door to be opened anyway. The, the, um, door want to be opened in the end anyway. So it doesn't add any extra information to say that we've intersected with something that we already know requires that to happen. So we don't actually need this anymore. So we can we can sort of get rid of it. It's not it, it's it, it, it doesn't matter if we just keep these two. All all all, all this tells us is that um this this is not self contradictory. So this this would require for F one to be opened at the end uh, to, for, for F1 to happen anyway. So we don't need we don't need us explicitly to be told that. So we can actually get rid of this bit here. Okay. So that's what I've done in, in, in this line. So so I, I've ended up with, with wanting to calculate the probability of this. Now uh, what you can do 
with these unions is that you can split you can split the probability up. So that's that's what I've done. So so I've got I've got the union here. So the, the the key the key thing is as long as these events are disjoint, which means as long as they can't happen at the same time, then I can split I can I can split them up. Um, and in this case, they are actually disjoint because we can't have we can't have um, m three happening at the end at the same time as m two. So we can just split up the probabilities. One that that they're completely independent. They have no intersection basically. That that's the whole point. We can't have D one, D two, and M three happening at the same time that we have D three and M two happening. So they have no intersection. So we can just split these probabilities up and add them together. Okay. Um, we can do something similar for the denominator. So I've got I've got the denominator here, which is like this. So I've I've split these ones up as well. Again, because all these events are disjoint, so we can do that. Okay. Um. Now. These are not easy. To, it's not easy to calculate the intersection between D two and M three, uh, so we need to rewrite these um, as something more useful. So you'll notice that I wrote here that we can write the probability of, of one event given another event is equal to the probability of their intersection divided by the second event here. Well, I'm using that same identity in a different way. I'm actually using it in the opposite. Um, I'm actually using it in, in reverse, if you like. So what I've said is that this this intersection can be written as um, a conditional probability multiplied by the second probability of that. So I've just sort of rearranged that formula for these intersections. So I've written all these intersections as pro as conditional probabilities multiplied by um, the probability of of, of this, this second event occurring. So probability of M3 given D2 multiplied by probability of D2. So you can see, I've, all I've done is I've, re, is I've got similar equations um, to this, except in terms of events like D2 um, intersect M3, and then I've rearranged them um, and, and um, put um, multiplied both sides by, by this, this event, and put them on both sides, and then have, rewrite the intersections as the product of these two. So I hope you can see what I've done there. So all I've done is I've written, I've, I've rewritten all of these like that, and now these are actually calculable. So okay, so the first one we got. Um, so remember, this 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 represents the probability of winning given that we've changed. So you can see what I was originally trying to calculate: the probability of F one given change. And remember that F one is the probability of getting the car. Um, given that we've changed, so hopefully this this will end up being greater than a half, if I'm right. So first of all, probability of M three given D two. Okay, so given that, given that door 2 has been opened, what is the probability that the host will pick M3? And that's obviously 1. He has to pick M3. You can't pick, you can't pick, you can't pick door 1 because it's got a car behind. You can't pick door 2 because that's, that's the one that was picked originally by the contestant. So he's forced to pick door 3. So you can see that I, I've, I've put 1 there because he's forced, because the probability of this is 1. Given that... Door two was opened originally by the contestant, and M three was opened by the host. Um, sorry, given given that the, given that door two was opened originally, the probability that um, door three is opened by the host is one. It's the only one he can open. Um, probability of D two occurring. Well, remember D two is the original probability of the contestant picking D two, and we've said that 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 that, that the probability of him picking. Um, the first door, the second door, and the third door are all equal, one third. So that's obviously one third. And a similar argument will tell you that the probability of M2 given D3 um, is also one, because if the contestant picks D3, then it forces the host to pick door two. And again, the probability of D3 is the same as the probability of D2, uh, which is actually the same as the probability of D1. These are all a third. Okay, so this then then this one. So given that the that that the first door is picked, which is actually the one with the car behind, what's the probability that the host will pick the third door? Well, you can see in this case that the host has actually a choice of the two doors. The, the contestant picked the first door. The host can pick either the second door or the third door to open because both have goats behind. So you can see that since there's two options and both have an equal probability, this is going to be a half probability that he'll pick M3 given D1. And again, this is going to be a third. So I suppose similarly you can see that, that M, the argument for M2 is exactly the same. It's a probability of a half. And then these two are the same as the ones on the top. 
So you can see that these are these are one times a third plus one times a third. So all I need to do now is numerically evaluate this answer. So one third plus one third, that's a sixth, that's a sixth, that's a third, that's a third. Okay, so that's two thirds on the top and three thirds on the bottom, which is one, two thirds over one is two thirds. So you can see that the probability of get of, of ending up with door one, which is the car, given that I changed, is equal to two thirds. It's twice as likely as the probability that you would end up with the, with F one, given that you stayed the same. Obviously, this is because that we, we the, there's only two options available. We can either change or we can stay. There's, there's nothing else we can do. So, given that all probabilities have to add to one. Um, since these are our only options, the probability that we stay must be 1 minus the probability that we change is equal to a third. And actually, you can use a similar argument to, to, to derive the probability that you stay is exactly the same. And I've done this, and, and, you, and you end up with a third in exactly the same way. But once you have the probability that you change is two thirds, it's easy to just um, uh, argue that this is going to be one third. So we can see that the probability of um, changing is twice as likely you try slightly to win as you as you as you are of staying.